<laughs> hey guys, what's up? It's Lex and Courtney. Um, you are listening to The Pleasure's All Yours. Uh, we obviously spend every week encouraging sexual liberation and education in the black and queer community. We r- really wanted to just create a space where we can all just come and talk share our freaks na- freak nasty ho stories you know and more importantly just educate each other um and really just remind you that the pleasure is all yours it's all yours um and the cats are doing their fucking cat thing because they are zooming around they are doing the zoom shit if you are watching us on youtube right now you see the pussies on the wall painted by the one the only lex it's me yeah they did a fucking dope ass job with those paintings. Yeah, we popped in the today. Coochie Galaxy is really the star of the show. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. She's the star of the show. That's why she's in the middle. Yeah. Do you take commissions, Lex? If um, you want a coochie drawing. If somebody really wanted one, I guess I would. Yeah. Yeah. If you wanted one that bad, then yeah, I'd do it. Okay. Hit. You heard it here first. Hit them up. Um, you can always click uh on the links in our information and description boxes yes. for our Instagram page and stuff like that, you know. Send me a DM or whatever. Wow. I can't believe that last week we passed ten episodes. Yeah. We did that shit. Ten whole weeks, bitch. Yes. That's it's, a month and a two months and a half. Yes. It's giving consistency. It's giving planning. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's um, giving um hard working. It's giving talent. It's giving it's vulnerability. Give, it's giving sexy yes, also. Yes, yeah. it is. I'm so proud of us. Yeah. Like genuinely so proud Absolutely. of us. Absolutely. It's giving enlightenment. Yeah. yeah. All of those things. Well, you know, every day we start off with a fun fact. But also a pleasure principle, which, of course, is going to be like the body, the legs and hips, you know, all of that of uh, the episode. But Lex didn't really um, complete her job all the way. And I didn't get a fun fact. OK, mm-hmm. it's really just because I forgot. That's okay. I was helping my girlfriend move on Saturday and that's when I was supposed to do Blame it. Blame the girlfriend. I'm not blaming her. Wow. <laughs> it's all the girlfriend's fault. OK. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm literally just falling behind there were some things that i wrote down as like bullet points that i thought could have worked as a fun fact yeah but the way that i planned the outline you know it just wasn't going that way yeah it's okay and i i understand that what i what i said earlier is that shit's not always fun yeah so we don't always have to have a fun fact you know let's be serious let's be fucking serious be fucking for real be fucking for real (laughs) so okay if we don't have a fucking fun fact then i feel like we have to like do a cute little catch up or something okay. to like make up for that. Well, how was your week, Courtney? What was the gayest thing you did this week? Oh man, it's it's really hard to say because I haven't been very gay. I mean, even just by yourself, have you had gay thoughts all the time? <laughs> I don't know how to not have gay thoughts. I well, guess if I did more gay shit, maybe I'd have less gay thoughts. I don't know. Nah, I, the more gay shit you do, the more possibilities of other gay shit that comes into mind. So really, it just gets worse. And then you have flashbacks of the other gay shit you've been doing. So then it's like, am I thinking about anything else? Yeah, it's a feedback loop for sure. Yeah, it's ripple effect. Damn. It's like, ah, oh, damn, there goes a pussy thought. Oh, Another fuck. one. Great. Pussy. Now I'm thinking about the pussy thought. Pussy thought of having the thought of the pussy. And then now I'm imagining the pussy in front of me doing what pussies do. And it's like a whole pussy evolution cycle kind of thing. Well, I can't say that I've had any like gay experiences lately. I can't say that I've had any experiences lately. I think this retrograde is just doing what it needs to do oh it fucking is doing what it needs to do it's oh. sending back exes in my oh, life oh yeah <laughs> it is sending back yeah a whole lot of oh lord lord jesus so why why did my my first ever serious relationship i was it's probably like 20 2017 to 2019 2016 to 2019 that's what i'll say yeah yes and it's a long time ago okay and we broke up in 2019, mm-hmm. and I remember when we broke up, he, like, we were, you know, okay, you know when you are breaking up with somebody, and, like, y'all have that partial time where, like, it's, like, a six-week period where y'all are, like, n- you're broken up, but, like, you're still hanging out and, like, talking and, like, trying to work through things and, like, doing that thing where you can, like, pretend to be friends and, like, oh, all that shit. <laughs> Like, that's where we were, okay? Mm-hmm. And I remember, 
like going to his house like on we this was probably week four we were very much so still talking every day okay i'm not fucking crazy but i went over to his house why did i see some bitches pajama pants in the motherfucking living room on the fucking couch right and i'm like what the fuck is this he starts telling me about this girl that he's been talking to and she's almost kind of moving in. And I'm like, I look in his bathroom and he got different bath, bath mats. And I'm like, okay, no, that's cool. Okay. Six so weeks like, is enough. Okay. No, I mean, it wasn't even that, like it was, it wasn't even that long. Like it was yeah. clearly like this was happening. Like anyway, so we broke up for real and that was totally fine. I am. Oh God. I'm so glad I did. But point being is that three months later, she was pregnant. Yeah. And, and they were engaged. And yeah, three months later, they were engaged. Mm-hmm. And then six months later, they were married. And like, he had just like switched his life around. He like mm-hmm. started a business. He's like making all this money. And like, he just, when I, it's hard to just jump from place to place. But when I was with him, he was on drugs and just all this other things that I'm not trying to put out there, I guess. But maybe I should. It doesn't really matter. You could just don't know who he is. But like all these things that he put on me, And then, like, all of a sudden, he found this person, and then he got married and had this baby and, like, switched the shit up, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's cool. Like, I processed that. That was my my COVID quarantine. That was my first part back, was just really processing what that meant and, like, me being okay with that. So, I'm good. Trust me. That's been done. But... Not this nigga messaging me during the motherfucking paragraphs, Paragraphs. during the motherfucking retrograde, during the the Libra, the metrograde that is stationed in Libra. Okay, right now we're talking about relationships. We're talking about we're talking about patterns. We're talking about justice and balance. Okay, why did this nigga message me talking about I'm getting a divorce? I'm drunk in a hotel room. I just got a DUI. You're the only one who's ever really, really been there for me or something like I that. Had, or who knew me or something. I some had to like post that. this on my close friends because I'm like, nigga, what? What? <laughs> Not you're the only one that other that really knew me. <laughs> like and and Not like, I'm talking about you know what? RIP because that's <laughs> she his grandma just passed and so, he, <laughs> and, like, this week, and so he said that he was like you know my grandma just passed and, all right. and, I'm like, <laughs> and like that's not okay that's not why i was laughing she said like, r.i.p grandma like that's what i'm saying i'm saying like hold stop stop the presses because i'm not no. saying this because like i don't i'm hating on the grandma because like I respect that and I'm sorry that that happened because I'm I loved his family a lot they were so sweet and like he was crazy but like they were so sweet and it was just a family of women like he was raised with the family women so I really liked those women so to hear that his grandma passed I was kind of sad but she was also a little bit racist also so Mm. this was a white family okay yeah this was a white family guys I, oh, but Courtney's always like, remember the time you dated a white woman? My yours was full white. Mine was only fifty percent. Okay, but you've done it twice, so <laughs> might as well have been one whole one. And you still had to be when you went home for Christmas with these niggas. You was going to hang out with white people every time. <laughs> Bitch, I can't. Stand you. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has. Mistakes. She wasn't saying that whenever she was like, "You remember? You remember that time you dated a white woman? Remember?" It's just hard to forget. Okay. Oh, okay. But, you know what? I should I be mean, more. I should be more understanding. Yeah, because and I apologize. Mm-hmm, Do not mm-hmm. come for me again. Mm-hmm. Like again in this space. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, all I'm saying is that niggas be coming back at the most inopportune times, and it's like, especially I, in a retrograde, though. For the record, they seem like they were in a hard place, and Lex told me, "Do not reply, do not engage, do yeah. not blah blah blah, whatever." Because you know, if, when they message you on Facebook, I'm not his friend anymore. He couldn't see that I had read it or anything, but the second you reply, they can message you, they can mm-hmm. see your raid receipts, all that. Regardless, and not of only just that, not. I reminded Courtney that it was the retrograde. That was like the main thing is reminding this bitch that it was the retrograde. And also just making sure she remember all the shit that was going on. And like, do you even want to be roped back into that again? But can I say? And and, 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 and like, even in a minuscule way, even in like a, I need to vent to you way, because what are you supposed to do? And like, you already, like you already said, you've been in that position with him to be there for him so many times already. And like, you give niggas an inch, they take a mile. So yeah, you're at girl. That's really the reason why I didn't, except for when I went home. And then I didn't respond. And then the next morning I was like, he's talking about his grandma RIP. I can't just not reply. So I said, 
I'm sorry to hear about your grandma. I I really hope you and your family are doing okay. And I left it at that. Then he sent me a whole bunch of other messages. And I just really, that is actually when I disengaged. Because I yeah. was like, this has nothing to do with what I said. She wasn't going to tell me that she messaged him. Right? I wasn't. <laughs> I just have a feel. I just have a feeling that should I have called you? No, no. I just it's just you know when whenever we're talking about these things, I feel like I would have had to been like, damn, what happened with that? With what's his name? Bitch, I just got here. You know, you don't know what could have happened. I'm trying to be vulnerable <laughs> on the pod. I'm here for you. I want you to be. It's just okay. I don't like, and that's why I feel like this will be good over time. Like mm-hmm. as we go through new experiences and things, because we just like. It seems like me and Lex are the same. Like, we have a lot of things in common, but we actually really do not think the same about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And Lex does not have a lot of patience. And Lex does not have, like, a lot of, like, just, I think. I don't have patience for Lex has a lot of empathy. I think Lex, but this is, no, 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 no. I thought that. Oh, sorry. But that's actually not true. I think you just don't have patience for people. Mm. But it's, it's like, you have to get to a certain point with that person. You Mm. know what I mean? It's not like you're just off top, like. I don't have patience for anybody. It's like, okay, this person has just shown me repeatedly that they can't handle my patience, so I'm just not going to be their patience. And that's, yeah. okay, men is definitely, like, a large group of that, for sure. But I'm, I don't If know. you don't deserve, like, patience for me, or if I feel like you don't deserve it, I'm not going to give it to you, because how much can I give to you before that's enough? You're absolutely right. And I don't know why that's hard for me to. Really but understand. I feel like I've had so many people react to me that way. But it's like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm very like um, vocal about my boundary. And like most people aren't used to that. So then I say it and they're like, well, that's a little mean. And I'm like, I just don't have the space for that. And I don't have to have the space for that. And I'm just letting you know that I don't have the space for that. But I could have just lied to you. And let you go on about it, and that would have made you feel weird because my response, my energy, my overall reaction to whatever it was that you were telling me wouldn't be genuine, and you would be able to tell because I'm not a very good liar or faker. I can keep a secret real good. Yeah, but that's a that's such a great trait to have because you're never gonna be put in a position that you necessarily don't want to be in because you can always just like you're somebody that can always just say, mm-hmm. yeah. actually, at this point, I'm good. I'm kind of somebody that feels like if I like inferred or like promised you something or like I just feel like I have to like make up for that in some way Mm. and like that that's just something I'm trying to grow out of but that is how I feel like not in this case I guess I just feel like this nigga messaged me about his grandma and like I just felt bad like I can't just like leave that shit R.I.P. so like and especially because I know you know like you you were like around them. So it's not I was, like, and it's not it's like, not like, like I liked his didn't grandma. Know, you know? I actually didn't like his grandma. Oh, never mind. Very much. <laughs> Again, she was just a little bit. She was just really ignorant. You know how white women are ignorant mm-hmm. sometimes. That's how she is. Okay. Like she would be like, "Oh my gosh, how do you change your hair so fast?" Or like, "Oh, what side of town do you live in?" And when I told her, there, she was like, "Oh." How long have you guys been living there? Wow. I was like, oh. Okay. The passive aggressive racists are really the worst ones. Yeah, it's just, it was like small things. And it's like, okay, girl. Wow. Okay, girl. Anyway, how are you? I'm doing well. How's the retrograde treating you? Um, That's a very interesting question. It's okay. It has me, um, like, questioning, like, um, habits. Like, we already said, it's like, and... Um, one of my friends was just reminding me of like karmic habits when we were talking about past experiences that we've had and they're like wow you know you're in this space and this is like technically like the second time you've been in this space and like maybe the third time you've been in this space with someone like close to you and I was like wow yeah I didn't I actually didn't realize that until just now and so I was like how one how do I keep ending here and two how do I process through it like as I go through it you know yeah it just has been a very like odd thing because I feel like it's um, growth, if anything, and really prioritizing like what I find important and like not really so not so much making like a hierarchy of like things in my life, but trying to make some kind of like list or like chart of like what is important to me, where where it marks its importance and how can I like keep going and how can I adjust to what I'm doing now to the way that I should be like 
mm-hmm. going, which is really hard because yeah. <laughs> uh, habits are hard to break. And I just don't <sighs> constantly like mentally having to process through something is so exhausting to me. And it makes it so hard for me to like do anything. Yeah. Like I always say like, whenever I'm emotional or whenever I'm like really, really, really thinking about something, it it feels almost impossible to even get up and feed myself. Like it just is a lot. It just feels like a lot. It feels like I'm thinking about a lot, like I'm doing a lot of things and it just makes it, it like everything else in my life sort of falls off. So it is really hard because I'm trying to not let that happen, but it is extremely hard. That's why I'm like taking care of my mental health feels like a third job to me, like yeah. truly because it takes me so much effort to even like sit down and get my thoughts to be linear and like even just like think about this one thing and process through this one thing because I'm always fuck like my thoughts jump all over the place like I could be thinking about one thing and then it's like wow now 40 other things are now I'm thinking about oh what about this and what about this and what about this so it's really hard maybe (laughs) things like like meals and like rest like we can like automate those you know like okay it's monday i know i put in the trader joe's tacos on monday on tuesday okay i know my boo makes curry on tuesday yeah on wednesday like make it you know and that's my and that is my plan um especially like with income bring up and stuff that is definitely my plan because i like i just realize every day how stressful how stressful like the way my brain works is to me every day and like with or without medication it has still been that way where it's like I just I can't think in a straight line and it makes it really hard for me I I was telling someone I was like if I could paint a picture for you of what my brain looked like it would literally be like a full wall full of sticky notes and all the sticky notes are different colors And nothing is color coded. So all the yellow sticky notes don't have the same kind of message on it. Mm -hmm. All the red ones don't have the same kind of message on it. And then what's happening is like a breeze comes by and a bunch of sticky notes fall off and I'm trying to catch them all. That's literally what it feels like being in my head, like all the fucking time. And so it just, that should be tiring. I'm I'm tired of it. I'd be wanting to take my brain out my ear and like sit it on the table or something. Have you ever been on like ADHD meds? No. No. I've, I've, like, taken Adderall one time as, like, a, you know, when I was younger, this used to get me fucked up. Like, my mm-hmm. friend was like, ooh, yeah, you want an yeah, Addy? Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, totally. I'll fucking take an Addy. No big deal. I take an Addy, and I'm over here organizing all the cabinets in my kitchen. I'm having full conversations. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, wait, never mind. And I can remember. I can never remember where the fuck I left off, like, mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. And here's my friend fucking slumped on the couch. I'm like. <laughs> are we still going swimming? <laughs> like, are you good, bitch? <laughs> I feel better than I have been here. <laughs> like, I literally was like, is this, like, you bitches just think in a straight line every day? That's it? And they're like, yeah, pretty much. I was like, I should kill all of you. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my gosh. Maybe we just have to it find any so, kind of way for you to get It made some me of so that. upset. I was like, this is just crazy that I could, like, it. this is all I needed to, like, feel like a normal human being it feels like my head's always hooked up to a generator i don't know if that, how that makes sense but oh wow wow that was what, yeah <laughs> i yeah. wish i i want to just unplug you but like in a in like a don't die way, way. Yeah, yeah i got you like a sleep mode okay I'm like hey I mean, you could put me in a coma bitch <laughs> you do what you Pop. gotta do yeah <laughs> no i wouldn't do that put me in a coma real quick <laughs> I couldn't hit you. i'll see you next time <laughs> like when i wake up <laughs> like, <laughs> nobody ever likes my ideas this is crazy my it's not funny when you say it it's wow. only funny when other people say it wow see i was talking about Ooh. taking a hot sword to my to my own boobies and everybody's like that's too much you're doing too much and i'm like i don't know just get rid of them like it's what a um <laughs> like violently like <laughs> macabre like what bro? i was thinking of game of thrones and how like, they i was thinking yeah, of game of thrones. And, that's, and that's exactly why i don't promote anybody watching game of thrones fucking ever because shit like then your friends start talking to you like this and it's like <laughs> bro i didn't sign up for that i didn't come here for that i did also suggest a titty guillotine but no one liked that one either. no one liked that either <laughs> 
talk to HBO, please. <laughs> Email HBO all your crazy One of my other non non binary friends, they were like, new top surgery just dropped <laughs> titty guillotine. <laughs> The My girl. breasts are hurting. They're <laughs> aching right now. But that was a good one, Corey. Come on. It was okay. Okay, was whatever. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, today's is, topic. Yeah. yeah. Topic. Today's subject. Mm-hmm. Today's top <laughs> subject? Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. got it. Subject today is um, voyeurism and exhibitionism. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get into that real quick, real quick. Um, the definition of them both, like, so the technical definition of them, and I, it was really weird because I did also, oh, maybe this could have been the fun fact, um, okay. but I did also, I also was reading a lot of, um, different articles and they basically were like, uh, voyeurism is wanting to watch people, but the technical book and psycho like psychiatric term for it is uh, or definition for it is someone who likes to watch other people without their consent okay yeah yeah and same with exhibitionism it's someone who likes to like show their naked bodies or genitals to people without their consent yeah so like in the in the in the shows when you see like some guy opening his jacket exhibitionist um when you find out that like somebody looking through your windows and shit while you're changing or whatever voyeur but in the kink community it is um, considered a paraphilia, which we talked about in another episode. Episode four. Episode four. <laughs> and um, it is still, like, in that way, it is very focused on the person's consent. So if we're talking consenting-wise, a voyeur is someone who likes to watch people have sex. Exhibitionist is someone who likes to be watched while they're having sex or some kind of, like, sexual act, whatever. And it's like a kink for mm-hmm. them, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um but there and here's one thing I realized, you know, sometimes we, we do research for these episodes and it just really makes you realize how disgusting men are, because a lot of these researches were men who were wanting to do this without someone's consent. Yep. Mm-hmm. So either way, voyeurism and exhibitionism is uh, most popular with men. Um, this is often, like I said, um, pertaining to non consenting acts actions but have since turned into a popular kink um yeah uh in 2017 i had a lot of i there were articles that showed 35 to 40 47 percent of the population was interested in voyeurism or watching someone have sex which wasn't a lot 35 percent 35 to 47 percent of the general population i was like y'all bitches freaky i bet you most of y'all politicians too Mm. (laughs) <laughs> um only four percent express interest in exposing themselves to strangers while um 31 percent get off on the idea of accidentally being caught by strangers or being watched consensually and that's for women okay yeah okay, that's interesting. um which makes sense because yeah four percent where they were like oh yeah i just want to show ass to some random, random stranger people that don't want my ass in their face yeah just four percent but definitely 33 we're yeah. like yeah come watch me what's up yeah um research also assumes that most people find both of the the, the main people who find these like attractive are people who tend to be more hypersexual or people who don't know how to be faithful where it's like okay it's like you either like having a lot of sex or you literally just don't give a fuck okay. about like boundaries and things such as that Mm -hmm. um which makes sense (laughs) as well um and then a lot of people do really like it just plainly because of the risk factor like um it it, like this really also ties into like uh the bluetooth toys and things like that Mm -hmm. like when you go out to get a drink or something and you're wearing like a little panty vibe or something like that that is a form of exhibitionism so like nobody knows what's going on but you know what's going on and you're obviously there and people are, are obviously watching you. So, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That Bluetooth toy. Mm. Yeah. I never, I guess I never thought of that as like kind of a form of exhibitionism because you're out there having like an experience. Yeah. Yeah. But there still are people around. So it's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And like most of them don't know, but like, you know, they could know. You never know. Yeah. Maybe they've done it before. Maybe they also have one in there. Yeah. Um, Ooh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm just fidgeting with this. Um, but 44% of women like the hypothetical idea of voyeurism. 
um, rather than the actual act of it, while 22% of men um, don't like the hypothetical because they also want to do it. They just okay. Wanna, <laughs> they just want to go do it. So they're like, hypothetically, no. If we're That's talking about real, yes. It's so. just not enough. Exactly. It's just crazy. Um, and also, I did see that most people that do, like, want to do this, it's something about their, like, um, not like, it wasn't like sexual trauma. It was more like, um, I don't know, they've had ex sexual experiences that have made them be more open. Like, if they do go to, like, a sex club or something like that and they've mm -hmm. never been to one before, it'll be, like, a um, experience that will intrigue them to go and like try all of this out okay which i thought was really cool yeah um i guess this could have been a <laughs> all so many of these could have been a fun fact i'm actually gonna stop saying that um but exhibitionist is the most common sexual offense really as in like people exposing themselves people getting caught having sex in yeah, the car sexual, okay having sex in a oh, bathroom okay. but you know i also feel like that's like it's can I don't not conditional isn't the word. It's just about the perspective you use. Yeah. And I know that, you know, fucking law enforcement uses any yeah. kind of perspective they want to fucking use. True. But there's a difference between having sex in a bar bathroom and having sex in a school parking lot. There's a difference between yeah. opening up your trench coat to a group of women in Deep Ellum and being skinny dipping at a lake at 1 a.m. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but I understand what you're saying. I get it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just want <laughs> to. Okay. Um, yeah. I appreciate that though. But yeah, I, um, it didn't give me a percentage on how many crimes that are committed that pertain to that. But, um, it did say a lot of them are like, it's mostly men. It's mostly men that just will just go expose themselves in front of people. Oh, it actually said like 3% of the male population has either, openly expose themselves or has thought about exposing themselves to strangers. What do you think that is? Like what, what is the, what is the kink aspect? Is it the power? Like, is it power and knowing you made somebody have an experience they didn't want to have? Like, what is that? Why? Why? The, the article this came from, which we will like put in the description for this episode. Um, it said that, uh, it was like people's reactions, like the surprise, reaction is what gets most of them off is like the mm. oh my god what the fuck that is what like is exciting to them that's crazy and like the the possibility of getting caught by the police also is exciting to them because like i don't know i didn't like really it, it did give me like lists of people that are like in jail for a long time mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the because they had like several offenses of doing mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. There are even some states that do a rehabilitation for these people mm -hmm. um, because it is considered a uh, mental disorder. I just forgot what it was called. I think it like I forgot what they called it, but it was um, exposing like the act of wanting to expose yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's like a disorder. Like you because like you really want to do it, and it's not like and like they feel guilty. Some some of them will feel guilty for doing it because it's it's like. They're like, you know, I know people didn't want to see my genitals, but here yeah. I am showing them. Yeah. 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 So, it, yeah. So some of them, like we said in another episode, you know, um, like some of them are like, yeah, I really want to like stop doing this. I don't mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. don't really feel like I can control myself. But like most of them were just like, mm, whatever, and just kept getting arrested for the shit. But yeah, um, I did find an article uh, on psychology today from May of this year. Um, there is about. Oh, here it is. <laughs> This is the fucking thing. Um, there's about four percent of men that um, have had an exhibitionist, exhibitionistic disorder, which is the arousal of only exposing yourself to adults and children without their consent. Four percent. That is actually like yeah. a high. Like if you think about the amount of people that is in just the yeah. U.S. I don't know the U.S. population. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend. But I feel like it's at least like five hundred thousand people. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. That's yeah. like entire Dallas or something yeah but y'all want us to just be nice to men they're trying to show us their dicks and we didn't ask that we didn't oh ask and for this, that. this didn't even include like this didn't even include the guys that like to send you unsolicited dick pics and things like that oh. although that was on the list of things that like a pretty large percent of the male population. I think that one was at like 7% of men will just like send an unsolicited dick pic just oh, because. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know I've, I've gotten like so many. Ridiculous. Cause like 
why would you in the do last that three without months, any actually. warning? Why why am I in a corporate meeting and no, I'm not supposed to be on Snapchat in the meeting, but I'm on Snapchat in the meeting and then I I see your dick over the toilet. Yeah. Or I see your dick with a little cream on the top that's not what i want that's yeah. not what i asked i for. will say though from my own experience women are like not a lot of women do this but i have had at least one woman like even after me okay one woman that would send me unsolicited like photos of themselves even when i was like i don't want to see this and 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 i worked with this bitch so i was like this is weird i never asked you for these i didn't think that i made it like open for uh, for you to send me these like she, she would just send them to me and be like what do you think of this and i'm like well what do i think of your pussy lips flayed out on the kitchen counter i don't i i don't have any thoughts about it i actually want to call the police <laughs> i want to block you and she bitch. was a white woman so i was like this is a lot on my phone right now chicken cutlets <laughs> this is just a lot on my phone right now i no, just it's not i'm good actually okay so with that being said what is the appropriate time to send nudes to send sexual videos in general. Okay, let's say you guys are not currently fucking. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have a cute vid and you're like, oh, man, I want this nigga to see this shit. What time are you sending it to where it's appropriate? Because I personally have asked people, like, hey, do you want to see this sexy pic I took earlier? Like, especially if it's the first one I'm sending, absolutely. But if you've, like... I don't know. I guess, like, if you've seen my ass and you've seen, like, all parts of me, I'm like, oh, look, I cute, I took this cute vid. Someone else should also see this, you okay. know? To me, I feel like that isn't, like, a, ah, oh, my God, because you know this person, you know? Um, but, I mean, if, if it's been, like, months or some shit, haven't seen this person, you do not talk to this person, this person has no, like, you know, and you just randomly are sending them, like, ass and titties, I feel like that's a little weird. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, because like if somebody that I even if I've had sex with them, like a, like one of my friends, if I would like we haven't had sex since I met this person. So I'm like, at this point, if she were to send me nudes, I literally would be like, are you OK? Mm -hmm. Like. This is nice, but I didn't ask to see this. You yeah. Know? Some shit like that, because like not even if you guys were like flirting kind of a little bit like the night before and you're like, oh, just, you know, like, oh, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, we're we're tickling. We're getting drunk. We're like breathing on each other super hard. And then she goes home and sends you a nude. Are you still going to be like, oh, my God, are you good? I mean, again, if I if like it's been like it's been like two. It's been like a year and a half since I've since either one of us has seen each other naked. So I'm like, this is like I don't know, especially like knowing what they also have been going through over these past two months and like literally no context. We were just talking about something completely different. And you just sent me this half naked pic. Like, that's weird. Yeah, you I putting it on sense. your close friends and me stumbling upon it, completely fucking different. But I don't know. You just sent it yeah, to me. Makes sense. Okay. Why did you do that? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I guess I wanted to know the line between like inappropriate and appropriate for that. But yeah. it is really like a um, condition basis. Like, yeah. there's a lot of factors that have to go into it. Mm -hmm. But I say like 100% always, though, because like, this is coming from the bottom of my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to see your dick. So, <laughs> like, um, if you ever, like, she think said about... so calmly. Like, if you ever think about sending me your penis, like, just for fun, unless I... Because I'll ask for it. I feel like if I want to see it, ask, ask for a for full it. nut video I, and everything. No, you know, that's Leave actually... the sound on also. I, you, every episode, I have to get on this mic and say that I'm a bisexual woman, okay? Yeah. And I fucking love a good nut video, but let me ask for it. So don't just send me a fucking picture of your dick. Please do not send me a fucking picture of your dick. I don't want to see your dick. I don't want to see it. Honestly... On a Tuesday, I don't want to see it at 8 a.m. I don't want to see it at 8 p.m. I don't care. <laughs> I don't want to see it. However, if uh, it is kind of different when it's, uh, I feel like somebody with some boobs yeah. and an ass. Yeah. So, because I feel like that is different. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever but seen a penis? Like, they look like aliens. They don't look good. If they look like such a func they're a functional item, you know? Yeah. But I feel like. It's not supposed to be pretty, like yeah. a coochie. Yeah. It's supposed to get the job done. Yeah. But, like, ass and titties? And a, and a good little coochie. Absolutely. Every time. That's art. 
you're just keeping me updated on fine arts on the museum's uh uh the museum's collection i love it it's a new season we got a new style going love that i could write a think piece on this (laughs) perfect i was trying to get into art journalism and this is great this i'm actually gonna write my first research paper on this yes absolutely i'm I'm sorry it's okay go ahead (laughs) okay so um i know we have taken our little bdsm quizzes but are you a voyeur or an exhibitionist? Okay. This is what I will say. I'm not going to say I'm either one, okay. to be honest. Okay. Wh- well, which one do you favor more? Is there one that you favor more? Yeah. Okay. I think I favor voyeurism more because okay. I'm somebody that gets anxious at the thought of having... I love... I'm a performer. I love performing. I'm a singer. I an. I like to say I'm an actress, but then I met Lex's girlfriend, and then I was like shown that I was actually not an actress. So, um, but I, yeah, I, I'm a performer, but I, I don't want that extra weight on thinking that like, okay, this person is watching me. So now I have to think of the next position. I have to like, think of how I'm breathing. I have to think of how my look, I have to think of, and like, I know that the, a true exhibitionist is not thinking of that. Mm-hmm. They're thinking of like, oh, I know I look like this. I know that this yeah. is happening. And like, I like that people are watching me. But I'm not that. So I like watch. I think I like watching because I I like watching people that want to be watched yeah. because then it's like, oh, you're putting on a show and I'm such a good audience member. <laughs> I want to make sure, you know, like you're doing such a good job. Like this is true. I, I think I'm definitely more on the voyeur side, but I wouldn't mm-hmm. put a label to myself as either. one. Okay. I can yeah. understand that for sure. I'm more of an exhibitionist than a voyeur for sure. I definitely do like to watch. But I guess I like to watch when I'm doing, not yeah. like, oh, I just want to watch you guys have sex. Like, I like to watch when I'm doing something. Like, like that stimulates yes. you, so it makes you want to do other things. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, but when it comes down to it, I love to be watched, especially in a sexy way. I um, I love that shit. <laughs> yeah. What is it about, I, like, being watched that, like, turns you on? I don't know. I like, because I think I'm pretty sexy, and I like whenever other people that also think I'm sexy want to watch me do sexy things, and then I can just really be extra sexy in those moments. And I like the look in people's eyes when they're watching me do stuff. Like, I like that shit. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's something about someone looking at you and you just feel like they very literally are about to fucking drool. Like yeah. I fucking love that shit. That is my shit right there. So, um, yeah, I'm more of a, like, watch me up close kind of person. Like come and sit next to me. Let me put my head in your lap. Watch me do this shit, you know? But like, if it's across the room, I'm also totally fine with that. But preferred is like sitting right next to me or something like that because I need to also hear the breathing because, you know, when people are turned on, they breathe a little different. I like hearing people hold their breath while some shit's about to happen. I'm like, yes, this is doing it. This is doing it for me, Mr. Krabs. I love it. Like, you're adding to my experience by your reactions, and I really appreciate you. Um, so, yeah, I'm a, I am I love it when people watch me. Like, that was my favorite part about OnlyFans and stuff was, like, people watching and always being like, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, like literally. You, I'm going to tip you just for this picture of your tits. Thanks. Mm, like, yes. That's thank the you. best part. Exactly. I have to do any really work for this. Exactly. You just saw my nipples. You particularly enjoy group sex. So yes, do you think do. that that's just like kind of like a side thing to that? Because like what you're saying, like, you know, you like the person to be involved and like yeah. all well, these things. It's not even like they have to be involved. I just, I just like to be able to hear their body's reaction. Okay. That's yeah. really it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got yeah. you, got you. Okay. But, yeah. I am more excited when they are involved. I do really, really enjoy group sex. So yeah. <laughs> like, that's probably like top at the top for me. Like definitely one or two, like for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. It just really like, I don't know. It's the energy from everyone. It's the sounds. It's like the the look of people enjoying themselves in that way is always so nice because everybody just looks so relaxed and free and happy in those moments. That is truly what gives me joy. Yeah. <laughs> so like in almost any, e- even in a non-sexual context, like seeing the people around me, like just genuinely having a good time, like really makes me feel so good. So, you know, I would, it makes sense that it would carry over into my yeah. sexual life too. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I know mm-hmm. we'll talk about 
probably that in a separate episode as well. <laughs> yeah. But like you, have you, have you ever been to a play party? I have been to a play party before. Okay. It was three it was four of us yeah okay. um and it was just so nice because um this like i've been to other play parties before with where it's usually like couples and then i'm just the bitch that's like everybody fuck me you know yeah. like that's usually me i'm usually the unicorn in the group um but this time it was like everyone had it planned that we were gonna like get together we were all gonna take some molly it was um one of their birthdays so we threw a little birthday party and they had a sign up on the TV that said, um, be gone by midnight <laughs> because that's when we were going to take our Molly. And once the Molly kicked in, that was, that was just going to be it. Like that was going to be it. Yeah. If you were still here when the Molly was kicking in, that's on your own. You're, you're, that's your fault. Okay. Yeah. You're just yeah. basically yeah. telling us you're going to see there. some ass. You're going to see some titties. Yeah. And it was just really nice because everyone's queer. Like everyone's queer. Three of us were non-binary. One of us was trans. So it was just really nice because even like while we were like, making out like warming up to even get everything going everyone's like you know is it okay if i kiss you here um do you like it if i touch you here like just checking for boundaries yeah before everything got crazy and it just is really nice because you see how many queer people like to call their genitals different things and that was just really interesting to me but like everyone being so f like aware of your boundaries and what you like and what you don't like was such a turn on also yeah. but I don't know. Getting fucked by three people at one time is like, it's <laughs> a lot. Three queer people at that Two, like two of them being very hyper femme and like beautiful and like your pussy just squirting on these three people. And you're just like, yeah, like absolutely is a good fucking time. And then it's like one o'clock when you get started. And the next thing you know, it's fucking seven 30 yeah. in the morning you can hear the birds chirping and it's like, oh, fuck, I have to be to work in like three hours and I have not slept this whole fucking time. So coochie sore, body sore, don't know how the fuck you was in half the positions you were in. Like it was really fun and I would most definitely do it again, especially if it were people that I know as well mm -hmm. as I knew those people. Mm -hmm. So, Wow, I love yeah. that. I'm so glad that you got to have an experience yeah. like that. It's fun. I yeah. also realized how many experiences, like not particularly like like that, but how many experiences I've had where it's like either me watching someone have sex or someone watching me have sex. And I just really love that for myself. Okay, with that be I already know the answer to yours, I feel. I already know. I don't know why <laughs> I'm gonna ask this question. I'm just asking it for the, the people pod, don't know. Yeah, exactly. The people don't know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I saw one of my friends on Twitter had just posted this question and I responded to it and like we were going back and forth until I we got on the pod. So mm -hmm. just, they said, what is your preferred um, MMF? Okay. FFM, FFF, MMM, or okay, let me just say them out loud. MFF, so this, or, M MFM. Immense so man, either yeah. Yeah. all yeah. women, two men, two men, one woman, or um, one man and two women. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So I actually have not had any experience. Oh, wait, I lied. <laughs> I just almost told a lie right there. Yeah, you did. I think if we're talking about, if I'm talking about the memory of, like, three women, I'm going to fucking choose that one. Yeah. <laughs> like, every one where it's three women, I'm choosing every single one of those because them hoes, fantastic, fantastic. The one that lasted forever in the car, fantastic. Continuing at the apartment, amazing. The one after that, equally amazing. Like, I don't know. Those are my favorite ones because, like, so, most of the time they weren't even supposed to happen. It just sort of happened. And that is, like, that authentic, like, nah, we need to fuck that is my shit right there yeah. um but like you know i do also love like um ffm too like just two women and one man because sucking dick with a pretty bitch wow fantastic fantastic watching like also watching someone else get fucked after you just got fucked fantastic because it's like yes i have been there i i understand what you're experiencing right yeah. now and i'm here for you okay i'm here for you babe don't even worry about it. i'm here for you i'll hold your hand everything will be all right don't even worry about it like i i fucking love that shit that is my shit um i personally just if we're talking like two men and one woman i know that's your skis 
Okay, that's nice to use to look at. Yeah. But um But I know but that's like a fantasy to, of yours, yeah? Mm, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I think things have like sort of sort of changed, but like okay. yeah. I, but there's also a difference. It's like is it a straight um Oh no, they have to be female, gay or is it a bisexual? Now if it's a bisexual situation, yeah. I think that's fucking awesome. I'd actually just want to see that. You would just want to voyeur it. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'd want to be a part of it. I'd probably want to be part of it. Yeah. I have, yeah. <laughs> I think I, yeah, if I saw it, I'd probably just want to be a part of it. But yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't also be, a, I would love eventually to have a MMF that's straight or bi, whatever. I just, I like I'll the idea. I'll come as your backup, bitch. I will, I will come as your I, backup. I'm, I want, but the thing is, I would, I feel like I would appreciate it, but I feel like I wouldn't even need that because if that were to happen, I would want it to be. Between two niggas that like, I don't even, I don't even feel like I wouldn't even think that I would be unsafe yeah. at any point. Yeah. I wouldn't have to question at any point. Like, I want two niggas that are devoted to me. And at some point, I had that, and I, I missed out. And now one of them has two kids, and so I will never be able to have that again because he won't leave his baby mama. Anyway. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just feel like I have a lot of things going on. Anyway. It's okay. Yeah. Um, Do you have a favorite experience of watching or being watched? <laughs> on the spot. Oh, my God. But she didn't really put me on the spot because they sent me the outline. And I, I was did. supposed to read the outline and the outline and asked questions. I didn't. But let me tell you something. Cause I did read the outline because I know this question was on there. I just didn't <laughs> take the steps needed to complete the action. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> a little ASMR for you guys. Um, I, I, uh, no, I wish I could say like I had like a really standout like experience of being watched. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, yeah, I have. Actually, mm-hmm. yeah, I have. Um, I I have enjoyed threesomes. I enjoy, you know, I've only actually ever had um female threesomes, so like I've had a like FF like all female threesome and then I've had two females and a male threesome. And I actually really like when he's not even involved yet and yeah. you're just like hanging out with each other and he's kind of just watching. I like thinking like we could tell him he can't get in at all <laughs> or we can tell him to join in like I sometimes you know like it's it's the power that comes with like i know this looks fucking good and yeah. you can hang out over there but i want you to know that we're already enjoying yourself and like you're just the ourselves and you're just the accessory like yeah. you're just coming in, you're the dick in the to room like get the really job it. done and yeah. like we could do this without you i want you to know <laughs> we're here you're here because we want you to be here that's yeah. what i like yeah mm-hmm. definitely love that what love about that. you i have several I don't have a particular like number one favorite because I'm saving that for my birthday. Um, I'm saving that spot for my birthday. birthday. I do. Oh, do I? (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I'm saving the number one spot for my birthday this year because um, I'm just hoping it goes great. Your birthday's coming up. It's Libra season. Yeah, it's in like maybe three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks now. My birthday is October 20th, right before Scorpio season. Yes. Yes, right before. Um, Libra and Scorpio season are my two favorite seasons. Yes, they're so, so fun. The weather's cute. The weather's fun. Yeah. You get to dress up a lot for various reasons. And then we hit Sagittarius season, and it's like depression. I don't. I <laughs> love Sagittarius season. I that's December. To me, yeah. January is the depression because you have like. But that's still Sagittarius. It's Capricorn. Oh, season. okay. Then yeah, never mind. Sag then, yeah. is like the majority of December. Yeah, it's, that a, it's is. most of de- it's most of December. Yeah. and then Capricorn starts at the end of December, like Christmas. Yeah, so. and then we get into Pisces season, and everything sort of evens out. Yeah, yeah. I was like, who comes <laughs> next? Okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I don't even remember what we're talking about. It's girl. okay. I will say though. Now we're getting back to the topic. Um, we, <laughs> I got real distracted for a second there. I was seeing a whole lot of body flashbacks, a whole lot of them. And then I'm seeing the possibilities of the ones for later. Like, it's just a it's lot hard. going on. It's and I'm hot. Like, I'm slightly sweating now. Like, it's just. Yeah, I told her to turn the AC off. 
<laughs> it's just a whole lot going on. But in regards to exhibitionism and voyeurism, the key to doing it ethically is always um, consent, you know, and I know like we have talked about consent in another episode and we will most likely talk about consent pretty often because yeah. it is very important. Absolutely. Um, And when it comes to this kind of stuff, if you are like, wanting to do it ethically you should be doing it ethically then you always want to have the consent from the person that you are watching or the person that is watching you because just how like i don't know just because you think someone is like into you like that doesn't mean they want to see your ass yeah. like even for women it's still just making sure that you have the consent to be there with people and i know that's like a really hard conversation to have for some people because some people don't even know their own boundaries um until it is presented to them and you know that's totally understandable but it, it still is like you still want to have consent before you just fucking send your ass and titties to anyone before you send your dick and balls to anyone you always want to have consent yeah um before you touch someone anything we live in such a digital world so yeah i think that's always a good reminder to have that like that boundary is still there. yeah just because you can get on someone's twitter and look at their selfies and look at any half naked pictures that they have posted that does not entitle you to having that from them or for you to send the same content to them because as a bitch who used to post nudes pretty frequently i just like being looked at that's it bitch i just want you and to look at me and go on side of you that's huh? it look at me and i just want you to like and favorite it so that way you can come back to it later you know i like when my friends want to see my hoe videos because always, it's like always i they also the best hoe videos. yeah i also really want you to watch this i want you to masturbate to this i want you the next i want you i just want you the next time you see me to be like slightly embarrassed because like ooh, oh my god <laughs> Wow. You want me to be embarrassed, beach in like a horny way. Of your cooch? In like a horny way, not in like a Oh like a oh I know what you did last summer. Yeah. Okay. Not in like a oh no, I'm embarrassed. Like in a sexy way. Like okay, not oh a shame God. way. Yeah, no. Like the next time you see me and I'm all like pretty and dressed up, you're like, damn, that that pussy look good too. I already know. That's literally the goal of my life. That's it. I want you to know it's all pretty, all of it. So quite it, quite it. Does the carpet match the drapes, darling? No, I can't bleach my my landing strip. I'm scared to burn my coochie lips. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. Uh, there's like you can't put Vaseline around the sides of it. Um, I actually haven't tried it, but Would I. Would you? Is that something you're interested in to try? I, I, like, if I could have pink coochie hair, absolutely. But here's the thing, Courtney. Everyone knows, or all of my the people closest to me know, I have a very special relationship with my pussy. Very. And I just think she's the best thing on the planet. I feel like everyone should have a picture of her as their profile pic. That should be my pic for when I call you. It's yeah. like straight pussy. Just, I really want that. But everybody's like, no, what if I'm in public? What if somebody calls me when I'm at my mom's house? I'm like, that's not my problem. Literally. Like you, your mom that wants out. to see it too. Probably you figure that out. Don't leave that up to me. But yeah, that's how I feel about it. Okay. Rightfully so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, ways to practice, um, voyeurism and exhibitionism ethically would be of course consent asking to watch or be watched and it's always nice when somebody's like hey can i watch you is that, is that cool i'm like yeah totally i love whatever. that question but i guess because i again am an exhibitionist it's like yeah of course take a gander whatever um role play also you could role play like you're not supposed to be watching Ooh, yeah but then you're like Watching, watching your partner masturbate exactly yeah like, i see that yeah. like a peeping tom kind of thing yeah, like okay. a little mm -hmm, like a little fun scenario yeah. absolutely um and then of course there are porn videos you can watch where people can do this and you know there's a lot of like metaverse porn now and a lot of like virtual reality and interactive porn so you know i'm sure you could really get in there to make it feel like you're really out here watching lisa ann get railed you know um i know we don't have any like um freak pay pigs that watch us unless we do um if we do i'm really the bitch for you but i really want a pair of vr goggles the um, nice ones the google pixar whatever the fuck pixel 365 ones those are the ones i want so um you can dm me for my p.o box and i'd love it if somebody sent me a pair of the vr goggles so i can watch vr porn all the time because i fucking love pov vr porn i would just like to say she looks so cute on the camera doing what she's doing right now this is for you I'm looking, <laughs> just 
just want you to know. <laughs> I'll send you a video of me in the goggles, furiously masturbating. <laughs> Literally, that's exactly what it looks like. I'm bow legged and cross eyed, baby. Just fucking DJ. <laughs> Whatever gets the job done. I love it. So um, you heard me. Okay. Another way is um, nudes and sexy videos with consent, of course. Um, PDA, uh, as in like making out, um, maybe some like light touching or things like that. Like, you know, just small things like that. Nothing like crazy, mm-hmm. but um, I love a good make out. Um, even just like dancing in like a really sexy manner. Like, yeah, like that, that is still like a form of ethical exhibitionism voyeurism because you are watching and people are watching you if you're ever like if you're shy and that's like not really your jam do stuff in the car you mm-hmm. know do stuff in the car around 2 a.m when everybody's getting out and, and everybody they're, has and to they're go to walking their car. past your car yeah, while you're doing that this. way it's like you're you have the it's like the being caught scenario you know yeah. it's like people could be watching but you know you're pretty safe you're yeah. in a you're in a good location you're wearing a skirt Everything's good. But it also, if you're in a car and the windows are foggy before anyone comes and you hear, the, and like, you know, you got your window cracked a little because it's a little hot in there. And it's then you hear yeah. the people like walking and you can see their shadow turning as they're walking past because the car is rocking and I'm sure they can hear. And it's like, what's up with this car right here? You know, all the other cars are fine. Car sex is the best sex. I yeah, yeah. say it until the, until I die. Until <laughs> it really I is. Die. I understand why it's like, high on the list of people getting like tickets and shit for yeah, yeah. oh oh <laughs> absolutely yeah i feel like if i'm not in the school zone you should just let me go <laughs> like... <laughs> i feel like everybody on that yeah <laughs> i just understood what the... <laughs> if i'm not in the school zone you should just Bitch, fucking let just me let go. This go you know how good this feels what like come on it's actually 2 a.m in a school zone and i'm still like who's around it's 2 a.m yeah, these kids got school no in the kids. morning yeah like what the fuck you're there's something the about fun. the angles there's something about the like feeling of like not haste like you have to be done yeah. quickly but like like yeah like you could it's get the ca- it's the risk factor it's how it's just a little too hot yeah it's how it's a little only just a hot. little too hot so it's like oh. and you're always only like slightly uncomfortable but like whatever's happening to you happening to you makes up for the fact that you're slightly uncomfortable yeah but then right when the orgasm is done you're like oh okay let's turn on this ac get in the front seat let's cut down these windows turn the ac let's get the fuck on out of here yes because the the ride back with the windows down is oh my god that, i and don't look, know and if, and if you have the, and if you have the right partner you already have a blunt waiting or a yes. joint waiting for you ready to go you got Absolutely. a bottle of water you guys are stopping at 7-eleven to get you a bottle of water and a Absolutely. slurpee mm-hmm. and a bag of cheetos Gotta and that's gonna be your night, bitch. Love it. Love that. Okay. And cool. then I do also have ways on how to get comfortable practicing these things. Um, and one is what I've already mentioned in another episode: masturbating in the mirror, um, just looking at yourself, even putting on like sexy lingerie and watching yourself as to get used to someone watching you because you can watch yourself do these things and you know what you look like yes so yeah, it's like no oh anxiety. yeah no this does look hot like i do look good like no no no, i gotta make sure i do this later you yeah. know like shit like that it's just preparing yourself um and then like that just also helps you figure out like how you even feel about it and something else you can add to this is even just like making a video of you doing these things even if you're not going to show anyone it is just getting like everybody gets a little camera shy even in your own house you're like wow what the fuck am i supposed to be doing right now like especially when it's something so intimate um it will get you it will get you used to people looking at you because i feel like that's one reason why i go out and people are looking at me and i'm like i didn't even notice because i've spent so much time looking at me and i'm like i understand you know um and then uh, having sex with the the curtains open um, on a balcony, a patio, or in a private pool also could help with, like, you know, voyeurism. Have you ever had sex in a pool? Um, I have put my fingers in pussy in a pool yeah. before. Yeah, okay. What does it feel like? Is it dry? Um, it's, no, because it's... Like, it does get that way, but I guess it's, like, on the inside, it's not. But, like, if you're trying to, like, really rub a clit, 
under chlorine water, it's not happening. Yeah, I just feel like sex, any kind of sex, Mm -hmm. that even that, like, I just feel like it'd be so rough underwater because it's like. A lot of friction. It's a lot of friction rubbing against I don't each know. other. It's I've, a lot of dr- the chlorine makes you dry all yeah. around. Like. I've like just really spent a a day in the pool, just like talking and like drinking and just like really, I, you know, I'm a flirty individual, so like just really flirting with someone and then like just jokingly like putting my fingers in some coochie in the water. You know, Listen. it was nice. It was it was real easy to slip right in. Perfect. So <laughs> I guess it just depends on how turned on the person is. Or yeah, something. clearly you were talking sweet to them. Yeah, the whole time. Yeah, yeah. that's my do. favorite. I like doing that. Yeah, but then it's like evil smile. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then another one is uh, sex in a public place that doesn't break the law, mm. aka um your friend's bathroom in your friend's garage like somewhere that is a private in your friend's house is what they're saying all over your friend's house i don't which leads me to believe that lex has had sex all over my per my apartment's past and present and oh, future when have i been alone long enough in your apartment to do any of that i don't know bitch okay okay do i, I don't even have suggestions. a i don't even have a key i'm just saying as in like someone a place that is not a public place like that is still a private area, even if it is your own garage with maybe like the garage up a little bit so they can only see your feet. Oh, wow. That sounds like a really yeah. good one. The, ba- um, the apartment balcony is good. Yeah, apartment balcony is good. Like somewhere that is considered public, but it is still a private place. Like just somewhere you can't get, get arrested, basically. Um, And then, oh, I've already said masturbate in front of your partner or the other way around. Oh, I didn't say that, but that is good. Yeah, masturbate in front of your partner. Let your partners masturbate in front of you. That's always fun. It's always so fun. Yeah. I've never done it, guys. I've never done it. You should get on that. Have you got have you done it? Um, I will watch my girlfriend masturbate. Have you done it? Was it fun? What did you do during? I just hands everywhere else. On them? Yeah. Did you touch yourself? No. Oh, <gasps> this yeah, this because week, Le- then. yeah, because yeah, oh. because because Lex just got a Sibian, oh. and if you don't know what a Sibian is, go you, fucking look that. I shit need up. you to, but like, I want you to show it to me when we start when we okay. get done. But oh my god, I'm so excited! Yeah, <sighs> what you say? You used the cowgirl and watch same time? I was like, that destroyed she your was coochie. Wa- she was watching me on the yeah. on oh oh. I'm just more of a toucher, like. I don't, I get, ner- I get, ner- I, 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 whenever I'm masturbating, that's my me time. So yeah, it always feels a little odd to me. Cause like, they stop and they're like, yeah, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, yeah. It, because it makes it, it makes it really hard for me to focus because for me masturbating, that's like the one time I can get my brain to like, shh, mm-hmm. yeah, just a sec. And so someone else like touching me and like, it just, it's not like it takes me out of it. It just is distracting. Yeah. Um. So even if I am masturbating, I do prefer to do it solo. Okay. But I do love, 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 love watching other people masturbate. I just fucking love that shit. Oh wow. Okay. But I'll like spread wide, spread eagle. Show you all my coochie lips. Show you mm-hmm, all my, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all my everything. I'll show it to you. So mm-hmm. somebody, if if your girlfriend wanted you to masturbate in front of you, in front of her, like she, they just like fucking come for me in front you would do it i would do it yeah it would just take me a little bit yeah okay that yeah i would do it it would just take me a little bit wow i want to do that that sounds like fun (laughs) kind of but also i get anxious so i don't think i could Mm -hmm. actually relax enough to have a regular like an actual orgasm because i would be thinking oh it's taking me too long to have an orgasm and that's literally why it that's literally why it's hard for me to do it yeah it's because that's what i start thinking because when i am by myself I can take my time and it's fine. And if I don't want to take my time, I can also do that. But it is just like a lot of other thoughts and like me basically being like, you know, is this fine? Like, the, like it's just like what you said in another episode, like, does this feel good? Am I just like, you know, am is this performative? Am I being like, you know, it just is hard for me to turn it off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially when I'm so used to like my masturbation time being my like, solo time that makes sense and yeah. like you deserve to separate those things mm-hmm. so yeah maybe that's just your preference yeah anything else to know no but that's it that's everything that's actually. fucking it guys we don't have a reddit <laughs> question because we suck and like, today's episode was really like 
not put together. But also, like, that's fine because w- we hit the mark and, like, I feel like we had a good combo and, yeah. like, a good repertoire. <laughs> so fuck, <laughs> yes. a, fuck a Reddit question. Fuck Maybe we'll niggas. do. And, you know, we actually have done so many two for ones. I feel like this really makes up for all the two for ones you've gotten. That's absolutely true. But if you guys have a question yeah. that you want to ask us about us or about you or about situations or you want to just tell us things or you want to get things off our chest, send them to us because we would love to read them on the pod and yeah, answer them and for in you. our um instagram bio there is a link and i'm pretty sure the link has our email in it um and you can most definitely send an email there with whatever it is that you have you can send us in a dm on the instagram um like either to our personal instagrams or to the podcast instagram it doesn't really matter but like either way just a little you know, so we don't always have to go look and ask a stranger. Like, I thought we were friends. I feel like all these people that we're answering questions for are white and male. And I feel like that's not my target audience. No. I want to make sure that I'm helping, like, the, the gals in the community. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, like, send us your questions or your thoughts or yeah. whatever. Just You're our target, target audience. So I don't want to know what white men think about yeah. what we're talking about. This, if any platform is not for white men, it's this one. If there is one person that this platform is not meant for, it's a white cisgendered man. Yeah. 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 And that's okay. Like, that is, that is actually have an enough audience spaces. that I'm cool with alienating. Yeah, they have enough this. spaces. We don't need to give them another I, one. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. Anything else you'd like to say today, boo? No, that's all. Okay, well, it's been another episode of The Pleasure is All Yours. Thanks for tuning in. You can follow us on all of our social platforms. They're going to be in the description. The articles that we talked about today will be in the description. Yes. Um, Check out our YouTube where this is live so you can see our pretty fucking faces and laugh together with us <laughs> and see the coochie on the wall that Lex painted yeah. and sometimes see Lex's caffeine yeah. and all that shit. And yeah, um, follow us. We love you, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.